Welcome back, everybody, to another Emacs video. The question before us today is, can Emacs help you uh, writers out there write the perfect sentence? Good question. Uh, spoiler, yes, I think it can. Um, this is relevant, of course, to writers who will be using Emacs as their, as their text editor, as their canvas for sharing their writing with the world. Uh, but it's also true for uh, developers who might be, might be writing documentation or uh, doing technical writing. Um, no matter what kind of writing you're doing, uh, Org Mode is a superior writing tool. Emacs itself is a great tool for, for composing your writing. Um, and there's just so many things you can do with it. It's uh, extensible, as they say. Uh, so today, uh, we're talking about sentences. So just a little bit of background. I was recently looking at a, um, uh, I guess you'd call it Jordan Peterson's writing app, even though I think the the company that's developing it, I think it's being managed by his son, I think. I I'm not sure. Um, you can find it on, on this YouTube video where they're talking about it. But basically what this is, is a, a browser text editor that basically incorporates uh, Jordan Peterson's approach to writing, which you'll notice if you look at it, uh, basically works a lot like org mode where it has you start from the i guess the the macro level organizing your main topics uh, which would can become headings or um, uh, you know sections and of course uh, you can give these sections titles but you know like like we've talked about in previous org mode videos you can exclude the titles of the headings if you want so it just reads in paragraphs um, you can you can customize it that way, but basically it gets you to start thinking um, in th in the way that that org mode does, where you can have different headings in different levels, and you can nest different topics and sections underneath each other. It's a way of organizing your thoughts uh, into the editor so that you can uh, organize how you're thinking about something that might be kind of complicated, uh, with the goal of of basically finding the best words to fit what you're trying to say. And it, it does that through the interface, which is interesting because that's what org mode does. Um, but it has a unique feature that I really liked that um, I knew could possibly be implemented into Emacs. I just didn't really know how. But I, what I really liked about it uh, was uh, how granular it allows you to get. So basically, so you start you started from the from the the telescopic view. You've got your sections organized. Now you're, you're kind of uh, putting your ideas into maybe paragraphs underneath these these different headings and then what what the app actually lets you do is grab an individual sentence and isolate it they break it off into another window and uh write different versions of that sentence um this is this is something that um you know would seem kind of obvious well why don't you just erase it and and you know keep typing it well it, it's actually it's interesting that that uh, you wouldn't, you may not have expected it, but just actually being able to write out different versions of that sentence and read them independently, it it does something different. It, it gets you to focus on the on the wording of the sentence in a way that is um, is very interesting. And um, so I was curious how I could possibly incorporate that into Emacs. So I, I took a shot at it, just just building a little uh, Emacs list package to do it. And uh, basically, the point is. The, you're wanting to get very, very specific with your words and say everything perfectly right down to the sentence level. So um, the the little bit of, um, of Emacs Lisp that I wrote to do this is incredibly rudimentary. I'm not a programmer. It's basically like the most basic instructions I could think of for how to do this. So let me just, um, before I talk too much, go ahead and demonstrate how it works. So if you are anywhere in a sentence, so either at the very end or somewhere in the middle, um, just because of the functions I'm using, you can't be on the first character of the sentence because the way I've written it, it, it goes it goes backward and grabs the sentence. So you can't be on the first character, but if you're somewhere in the middle of the sentence or at the very end, and the, the key bindings for this uh, in default Emacs are uh, meta A takes you to the beginning of a sentence and meta E takes you to the end of a sentence. And uh, the way Emacs knows what a sentence is, is um, it'll have uh, two spaces before it. And uh, you, can, you can tweak that in your config to have it recognize only one uh, space as, uh, as separating sentences. But I'm fine with that. I've gotten used to doing two spaces now, so I leave it that way. But you can tweak that. 
so the way the way my function works is uh, let's say I'm at the end of the sentence here uh, so I, I just did a sample paragraph here um, let's actually maybe we'll put this maybe we'll fill it so it looks easier to read um, so this first sentence it's not so easy learning how to ride a bike not a bad sentence uh, it was in it was in the it was in the third year of my life that I first tried to to do it. I've already seen a typo there. Uh, well, we're not going to tweak it yet. Uh, and then the last sentence, there were many lessons learned by me that summer. So all of these sentences need some work, obviously. I, I, I wrote them that way intentionally, of course. So let's um, let's just start with the first one here. Why not? So this, this, uh, this sentence here, remember, don't be on the first character. It's not so easy learning how to ride a bike. So what we're going to do in my little function here is meta s, s for sentence, and then the letter j. Uh, so now what that did was it it actually it grabbed that sentence from the document and uh, yanked it into a, a new buffer, basically. So now I see here's my sentence. It's not so easy learning how to ride a bike. I can I can you know tweak that a little bit, or I can just start writing different iterations, which I recommend. Um, you know, learning, learning how to ride a bike is not as easy as it looks. So that could be an improvement. Uh, let's see what else you can do. Um, uh, hmm. Riding a bike, like, uh, like climbing a tree is difficult, but you never forget how. Whatever. Uh, oh, actually, yeah. Don't don't save it. That's just uh, a habit of mine. Uh, so this we're going to destroy this buffer after. So um, so don't worry. I kind of like the second one best. Learning how to ride a bike is not as easy as it looks. Uh, kind of simple. Um, so like before, you have to be at the end of the sentence or in the middle somewhere, but not at the at, on the first character. So if I choose this sentence, and I, I like the way this works, now it's meta S and uh, the letter K. So now uh, what that did was it, it grabbed my favorite sentence from the other buffer and brought it back to the, to the buffer that we were working in. Uh, so yeah, it, it, it's, this is the basic functionality. When you see the code, you'll see uh, that I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not a programmer by trade. Um, it's just some very rudimentary instructions to get it to do that um, and um, I hope to develop it more but um, let's look at this this uh, second sentence here so it was in the third year of my life that I first tried to do it oh, that's a pretty bad one all right so we're talking about learning how to ride a bike I'm not gonna go through every every sentence here but uh, so let's look at this one though there were many lessons learned by me that summer that's an interesting one you can kind of maybe take that out of the passive voice right so meta s j um, you could say, I learned many lessons that summer. Meta SK, much better. Okay. So yeah, so that's just a, a basic demonstration. Let's go ahead and uh, look at the code. Why not? So I, I jokingly called the, the program Sentinel, and um, it's so it's so basic. I could have just put it in my in my config file, but I I wanted to put it in its own Emacs Lisp file so that it's already ready, you know, for me to keep iterating on it, you know, maybe over the years or um, if, if people out there will help me with it, that would be cool as well. Um, I already have it on my my Git repo on my website, and I'll include a link below. So. Um, so if you want to see what it does, but basically it's got two functions, one to take a sentence out, like I showed you, all it does is it does backward sentence. It goes to the beginning, it kills the sentence and that puts it into the kill ring so that when you switch over to the other buffer and first erase anything that's already in that buffer, you just yank it. Uh, yank for those who don't know, I guess it's like paste. Um, it, it copy it. it it pastes the, the text that it took out of the other buffer into the new one. So that's the first function. And um, the, the other one is, um, so this is when you actually choose the sentence. It does the same, uh, the same kind of logic as before. If you're in the middle of the sentence or at the end of it, it goes back to the beginning 
kills the sentence. Uh, it deletes it, uh, basically, which is the same. It has the, the same effect as copying it. Um, goes to other window one, which is the original buffer. Um, it kills the buffer that, that had the, the sentence uh, broken out into it. It does another yank, and it, it deletes other windows. So it brings your focus back to where you're working. And then here, I just set the key bindings, the meta S, J, and K, to those functions. So yeah, as I said, it's very rudimentary instructions. And uh, ideas on, on iterating this, uh, the only other thing I, I can think of that would be interesting, but not really necessary, would be if the if the program remembers. So, uh, for example, when you when you grab a sentence, it creates um, you know like an association list. So it has the it has the sentence you chose as the key, and the other sentences you create get stored as values. So you pick one. It creates a new list so that if you want to edit that sentence again, basically that sentence that you chose becomes the key of a new list and the 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 other alternatives that you had worked with before are now values that you can go and look through again. So yeah, I, I don't know how to do that. I was playing around with it um, a little bit, but um, it's uh you know that can be that's a little more complicated but i'm sure i could get to that point the question is if that's necessary do you need the program to remember the sentence alternatives that you were working with um i could see how that would be helpful uh, then the other question would be do you want to um have that uh, in memory across uh different sessions so if you close emacs and come back um of course those all of those 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 um key value pairs will be, you know, wiped out of the, the system memory. So theoretically, I guess you'd have to write them to a file, perhaps, you know, like like a cache file or something that will save them in the background so that when you reopen it, uh, it remembers that. So I'm not sure about that. Uh, that's something I'll, I'll have to think about. And I don't know how to do that. So if anybody has any suggestions or ideas, by all means, you know, leave a comment, let me know what you think. Uh, this is a, a function that I can really see myself using a lot. That was why I thought it would be fun to write it. And um, yeah, if anybody else fi out there find it uh, find it valuable, it's on my website. I'll have a link in the description. But that's about it. So I think uh, in summary, yeah, Emacs can help you write the perfect sentence and um, keep uh, keep trying because the sentences are are not going to get any easier. You got to practice. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you next time.